we should. Thank you for coming out on the 4th of July. I understand they gave you ice cream and cookies, though, so, so that's, uh, that, that makes it a good celebration. You know, these are, these are interesting times. These are strange times. Anything can happen. Two weeks ago, I found myself playing one-on-one -on -one basketball with Jimmy Kim. <laughs> because I promise you if you were to wager on things that were likely to happen that would not have made one in a billion. But the back story was I'm a diehard Houston Rockets fan. And the Rockets tragically we came just short of the Western Conference Finals. We lost in Game 7 to Golden State. The next day Jimmy Kimmel went on TV and began making fun of us. And he said the reason the Rockets lost is because Ted was at game seven. He was at the game and that made him lose. <laughs> and so I got kind of ticked off. And I figured, well, rather than get mad, let's have some fun. So I sent out a tweet. I said, all right, big guy, you talk a good game. Let's settle it man to man, one on one, hoops. The loser gives $5,000 to the charity, the winner's choice. Well, Jimmy accepted. He got on a plane, he flew to Houston. We did it at Texas Southern University, TSU, had 6,000 people come out to the game. As I observed that day, never had so many people gathered to watch so little talent pass. And it was, it was an ugly game. I think there were a thousand fouls in that game. We beat the living daylights out of each other. But at the end of the day, the score was Cruz 11, Kimball 9. And I have to admit, the most beautiful part of it is Kimball had to get on a plane and fly back to Hollywood. <laughs> and for the rest of his life, 50 years from now, he's going to have Hollywood celebrities saying to him, Jimmy, how could you lose to Ted Cruz? <laughs> so it's the gift that keeps on giving. Did he pay up? He did. We ended up raising over $80,000 for two wonderful Houston charities. <laughs> You know, these are remarkable times in our country, too. We had a Republican president, Republican majorities in both houses of Congress. And I think as we entered last year, there were four big domestic priorities. Tax cuts, regulatory reform, Obamacare, and judges. My view was if we could deliver on all four, it would have a powerful impact, beneficial impact on the state of Texas. And if we couldn't deliver on any, it would have been one of the most heartbreaking missed opportunities of our life. For a lot of last year, it wasn't clear which one of those it was going to be. But as the year came to a close, it was remarkable just how much we delivered on, on tax cuts. Passing into law in December, the biggest tax cut in a generation. Cutting taxes for farmers, for ranchers, for small businesses, for job creators. Doubling the child tax credit. Cutting taxes for hard-working families all across the state of Texas. Doubling the standard deduction. Which means starting next year, 90% of Americans will fill out your taxes on a postcard. <laughs> Now, personally, I think that should be 100%. Amen. We need a simple flat tax and abolish the IRS. Yeah. But 90% is a very good start. Yes, yes. Second big priority, regulatory reform. We've seen job-killing regulations pulled back by just about every federal cabinet agency, just about every federal secretary. You know, I remember years back, I was out in West Texas. 
And I asked folks there, I said, what's the difference between regulators and locusts? I said, well, the thing is, you can't use pesticides. <laughs> and this old West Texas farmer, he leaned forward and said, want bet? <laughs> of historic tax cuts and lifting job-killing regulations is that we're seeing jobs booming. Millions of new jobs all across the country. The lowest unemployment in decades. The lowest African-American unemployment since we started collecting the data. The lowest Hispanic unemployment since we started collecting the data. There are now more job openings than there are people actively seeking jobs. That is a big, big deal and it's benefiting Texas. Texas is booming. The oil and gas industry is booming. For young people coming out of school suddenly having two, three, four job opportunities, seeing wages going up, Texas does great when we cut taxes and lift regulations. third big priority, Obamacare. Clearly the biggest unfinished commitment the public has had. But even that, it is worth noting, we did manage to come together and repeal the Obamacare individual mandate. That's something I led the fight to do. Back last fall, nobody in Washington thought it could happen. There were maybe six, seven senators supporting me in that fight. They all said, we can't do that. And yet by December, we made the case publicly to lift those IRS fines on six and a half million Americans who can't afford health insurance. Don't hammer them and make it worse by fine them. And we brought together all 52 Republicans and repealed the individual mandate. And now we need to finish the job. We need to repeal the rest of that disaster. And number four, judges. One of the greatest victories of this administration. Neil Gorsuch on the Supreme Court. on the federal courts all across the country. Do you know, last year we confirmed more federal appellate judges than any first year of a president's term in history. <laughs> For all of us who care about the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, who care about our fundamental liberties, who care about free speech and religious liberty and the Second Amendment, the Tenth Amendment, all of our fundamental rights is the courts where those rights are either upheld or undermined. And I'll tell you that nothing has underscored that more than this past week, the retirement of Justice Anthony Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah. This appointment could well prove to be the single most consequential event of the entire Trump presidency. And I'll tell you what I urge the president is that he should appoint a strong, principled constitutionalist who will always, always, always protect our rights. <laughs> Next couple of months, I'll do some fortune telling. <laughs> We're going to see Democrats. We're going to see Chuck Schumer. Ooh. Running around with his hair on fire. <laughs> but come October, we're going to confirm a new Supreme Court justice. Thank you all for being here on a holiday where many times you're 
at a parade or in your backyard or playing with your family or grilling up some burgers and hot dogs. Thank you for coming out and being a part of this. Thank you. Thank you.